The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to this Dynaflow Research Group webinar. My name is Luc Hannon and I'll be presenting this webinar regarding our new IsoTracer software package to you. Um, for those who are new to the IsoTracer software, uh, in the next 15 minutes I will introduce to you uh, the capabilities and all the, the added value. Um, and I'm well, really confident, at least uh, from what I uh, experienced myself using this software, is that uh, that you will see that it is really, really uh, handy when you start modeling uh, piping systems. Um, we, we ran into the situation where we received uh, isometrical drawings from customers and, and had to make uh, piping models uh, from these drawings. Um, which took quite a lot of time. And then after the analysis, uh, we still had to mark these isometrics. So put all the arrows on the right spots uh, and, and even uh, note uh, all the node numbers. Um, so we thought, okay, perhaps this uh, can go faster by uh, automating this instead of doing it uh, by hand, and thereby also uh, increasing uh, the, the quality and, and the looks of the whole item. Um, so that's why we built IsoTracer. The IsoTracer software package really allows you to click through the ISOs and, and quickly build up your model. I will uh, uh, provide a brief demonstration in a moment. Um, and what we've experienced, even, um, even for experienced uh, uh, pipe modelers, for example, we ourselves model in, in Caesar uh, a lot. And even for an experienced Caesar user, uh, we obtained about 50% faster modeling times when using IsoTracer with respect to uh, directly modeling in, uh, in, in Caesar. Um, as I've told, once you click through the isometrics, you automatically mark all the, the relevant items. Also, once you've well, uh, finished with all the drawings, you can easily export it to several of the pipe stress software packages. And also you will see that, that there's an interactive 3D model. So, uh, well, a situation uh, that I myself experienced is that if, if you have for say, say uh, 100 isometrics um, and you need to find the right isometric for a certain pipe section, um, that can be a hassle, but uh, using IsoTracer, you can just click on the relevant node or the, the uh, pipe segment in the 3D modeler, and you will automatically see the, uh, the related isometrical drawing, which, uh, which is, uh, saves a lot of time and, and uh, uh, looking around in, in big uh, stacks of isometrics, I can say. Obviously, superior quality control. You can uh, uh, rename isometrics, uh, reorder isometrics, um, and you can also uh, well, make really good looking isometrics instead of uh, a lot of nodes uh, scribbled uh, uh, next to each other or something like that. All right, having said this, uh, I will go to the isometric, sorry, isotracer software itself. Okay, so here we have it. So the IsoTracer software, uh, the interface consists of three sections. First, we have the left section where we see all the drawings. I've included two isometrical drawings uh, for this uh, demonstration. Then in the middle, you see the actual isometric. And in the right, you will see a 3D model being built up in a moment. Let's increase that in size a little bit. OK, in order to use it, we have to go to the markup tab. And the first thing we do is see if the uh, directions are in order with our isometrics. The reason we do this is because IsoTracer automatically detects the direction of the pipe segment. Um, so we will only have to uh, enter the length. But in order to, to do this, we have to set this uh, correctly. So we see for my model, it's already correct. If I would want to model in a different coordinate system, I can just change this. Uh, and that will uh, rotate the entire model for me. 
All right, let's set that back as it was. Okay. First things first, let's just start with this pipe segment. So let's choose a base number of 1000. Okay, so we automatically see a few things. We see a circle with the node number inside. Let's locate that to a more uh, to a better position. And we see a arrow, sorry, a, a line following my mouse. So let's click on the next node. Okay, we see that the next uh, node is being marked up automatically. We also see that I need to set in a few values. So the first one is the length, 6,000. Second one is the diameter. So let's take uh, 508, for example, 2. Yeah. Okay. So now we have modeled our first pipe segment. We see that it is also visualized in the 3D model. So next, I click on the next node. What you will see is that it automatically detects that I went in a different direction. I'm going to set the node circle there. All right, the length of this one is two, three, four, eight. All right, so for the next segment, I have quite a lot of uh, well, numbers, but not all numbers are provided. This is often the case on isometric uh, drawings, of course. So let's just take the entire section at once, like that, and set the entire section length. All right, and we will cut that in uh, smaller pieces later on. All right, so this is 349. And I think you can already get a good feeling about the speed uh, that you can uh, model with. So uh, obviously I'm going a little bit slower now to, to explain what I'm doing, but you can just quickly click from one spot to the next, and uh, the model is being built automatically in the 3D model. So now we come to the end of this isometrical drawing, and we see that we continue on drawing number two. So let's go to two. This is the continuation location. So let's click there first. Yeah, and we see that there's a text markup that says the uh, name of the old isometric, the previous isometric. Okay, let's continue. I think it's most interesting to show you here that even if you go in angles or different directions, that the pipe uh, modeler, the, the, the isotracer software, automatically detects in which direction you are going. Length of this section is 1588. And you can clearly see that the modeler automatically generates all the pipe segments. Okay, so here we have some valves, so rigid items. We simply build it, set in the length but then also set the type to rigid. Enter. And we see that it is also being modeled as a different uh, component here. Okay, let's do that again. And again. All right. So next segment is pipe again. So the length is 3997 type pipe. Note that we also have short keys to do this, but uh, for this webinar purpose, I uh, tend to click on everything, so just you can see what I'm uh, what I'm actually doing. Now, note this was a little bit clumsy of me. Um, I could have done this um, first. So, if I go in a different direction, you see that the direction of the marking of the node marking is kept the same. So we had all these node markings which were on top of the lines, and I just uh, place them to a different position. Okay, now we also see that this section has become a pipe again. And regarding the rigids, we also have to set a weight. So for example, a thousand kilos. Also here, a thousand kilos. And you will find that these weights are automatically translated uh, to Newtons once you import it into into your pipe stress software. 
Okay. So let's continue on these sections. I have to include some new nodes here. Therefore, we use the insert node option. And we do it on this pipe segment. Now, the first height length is 2487. Oh. Should be there. All right. And by doing so, we can uh, we can quickly include all the different pipe segments. So here we have the second line, which is 1759. Okay. And something that's interesting here is that I've chosen to have a node increment of 10. So we go from 1000, 2010, 2020, 2030, etc. Now, if I include a node in a line segment, it will automatically reorder the uh, node numbers. So you see that even though I've inserted a few nodes, you still have the increment of 10 organized throughout your entire line also on the next isometric. Okay, I think that's clear for now. How about branches? Well, we simply have to start a new uh, segment. Oh, first I have to include it, of course. Include the uh, node. Oh, no, it's already there. Great. Okay, so for, let's choose a node number 2000 here. And we can simply start from that node, 1050, and go in a different direction and start with your branch. Okay, now before I start moving the whole thing, I just want to show you that indeed the branch is modeled automatically also in the right directions. And as I mentioned before, even though I only have two numbers now, but you can see that once I press on a certain item, on a certain pipe segment, the uh, viewer auto automatically takes the right isometric. And this also works the other way around. So if I want to focus on this section of the piping, and the 3D model automatically goes to that segment of the pipe. Okay. So another feature I would like to show you is the fact that you can also include uh, supporting in Isotracer. So you can add it before you uh, export your model to the, uh, to the stress software. We can do this using the uh, support option. In order to do so, we have to add a new type of support. Now, in this case, we're going to use a rest support in a positive direction. And let's use a friction coefficient of 0 0.3. And we can just click on the relevant node, and the support is included. You can also see it in the 3D model. There it is. All right. Of course, we also have to add a actual stop. And once we build that, we can just press it, and it is automatically included. So once we now export this model to, uh, in my case, Caesar uh, stress software, these um, supports are automatically included. Okay, so I'm not going to build the entire model now. That will be a bit of uh, a little bit, uh, well, not that interesting to watch for you. Let's just open it with the full model. So once you finish it, you can just, you know, when model just click through the model from one node to the next, the model automatically builds it, and you only have to fill in the length of the piping. Now note that this is also a check to verify your model with the drawings. For example, we deliver these drawings to our customers, and they can now clearly see that we use the right lengths, right dimensions for their piping. Uh, calculation. You can also see that I've included some uh, some text markup here, so you can easily just include some uh, some additional notes that you wanted to uh, communi communicate to your customer. You just press on the markup text. Let's select a note first. So say we want to include some markup text here, and you can just type the text that you want to show. There it is. Okay, all these features can be uh, can be can be 
customized so you can include or increase the size of the font increase the line width like that support size could be a little bit bigger here like that okay okay and that's the way we uh, can build up our model and do all the markings on the drawings at the same time now of course we want to export these uh, isometrics once we've uh, marked them and we included all the text that we want to show and we can easily do that by just exporting the isometrics let's just uh, call it export it to okay all of them yes takes a little time And we can see that we have some really clear isometrics with uh, very uh, clear node uh, numbering. We see the uh, coordinates, we see the nodes that we uh, placed on, on the drawing. So this is really a complete set of drawings that we can, uh, can send to a customer. As I mentioned before, you can also export the model itself. Important feature, of course. So let's use a Caesar 2 neutral file in this case. And export it. Okay. I myself use Caesar software 7. Okay. So we now uh, um, export the model. It has become a Caesar 2 neutral file. Let's see. Okay, of course we have to first convert the neutral file to uh, to an actual season model. So convert. Okay. No. Then we open it. Example model. There it is. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay, so see that in Caesar, we now have all the features that we modeled. We have our piping, we have the supporting. We also have the rigid elements and the, uh, the weights, the rigids that we entered are automatically set to, uh, to the right unit, in my case, Newtons. We have the Press supports with the right friction as I inputted in uh, Isotracer. And we see that we now have the complete model. Uh, I only have to set the material and maybe some details uh, of, of Caesar, for example, the temperature. But uh, you can see that the step from drawing towards stress an analysis uh, is, uh, is much quicker once you use Isotracer. Uh, and as I mentioned before, like even for experienced Caesar users, uh, we uh, we ourselves obtained a, a time reduction of 50%, uh, which is significant because, yeah, as most of you know, the modeling takes uh, a significant amount of time uh, at the initial stage of, of any stress analysis. So uh, reducing that uh, that amount of time is well, a serious uh, time re uh, cost reduction as well, of course. Okay, so having said this, I want to point out that you can find more information and demonstrations on the Isotracer website, isotracer.com. We have some really neat uh, video demonstrations here. And all the Isotracer software uh, is, uh, uh, you, you get it included, sorry, you get included with the software, all uh, tutorials, etc. And, and I think it takes about uh, maybe an hour or so to get uh, to get a little bit uh, experienced with with the uh, Isotracer software, and then you can just uh, use it and, and go right ahead. Um, okay, so so that was my demonstration. If there are any questions at this point, feel free to ask them in the Go to Webinar uh, display uh, uh, box. Uh, you have a question column or a chat column there, so feel free to to ask me any questions. Uh, and for now, that is uh, that is all. And I want to thank you for joining this uh, this webinar. Thank you very much.